October 2nd, 2023. I'm going to be your host tonight. I'm Dana Durnford, also known as the nuclear proctologist.org. We are here to curb, stomp the nuclear industry, everybody in it. It's a despicable legacy. It's genocidal and omnicidal plans are well underway. We got lots of scumbag nuclear news to get through. Uh, that's not the poll I wanted to talk about. Is this the poll? Should it be illegal to poison people? This was Thursday's poll, last Thursday's, with man-made nuclear plant radiation, because currently it's not. And what I mean by that was a story that came out, I think it was 2018, 2019, a protester slash ex-candidate to plead guilty to seeking nuclear material but won't get a prison deal. And I said, well, that's kind of interesting. I started reading the story. And his lawyers, uh, Buck Bugany and Myers, filed a series of motions to dismiss the indictment against the protester, alleging that the nuclear terrorism charge under which he was charged is unconstitutional. And it's unconstitutional because Congress and parliaments and diets don't have the authority to criminalize poisoning with radioactive substances. So the government doesn't have the authority to make it illegal. They can make every other poison on the entire planet illegal except for nuclear. And the only people that has that authority alleged is the non-regulatory agency, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, which is a non-regulatory agency. And they ain't going to make it illegal. Because if they do, they can't use it in hospitals to kill you and your loved ones. And you have to close down every nuclear power plant surrounded by farms, which is the majority of them. Also last Thursday, we had an abnormality. I'll just run you through that very quickly. So here you see uh, Fukushima nuclear meltdown show September 28. And what was interesting about this was the premier didn't show up until the show was almost over. So the first couple of hours where you're waiting for the show to show up, it didn't show up. And it only showed up uh, in the last half an hour or something. And I've never seen that before. Last night's poll did the International Atomic Energy Agency and the nuclear industry have the right to relentlessly poison the ocean for the last 80 years. And sometimes you'll see me use like the letter, f the numeral four instead of the letter four, because you only got 100 characters. And it's hard to articulate uh, some of these points. So does the International Atomic Energy and the nuclear industry have the right to poison all the oceans and the fresh water and all the land mass and all the species worldwide. That's what that should have said. And my followers and the people that vote on my polls are perpetually right on. And uh, when I'm doing my shows, I do a lot of finger pointing. I'm not pointing, pointing my fingers at those who support me and have been around for years, right? I'm pointing my finger at the journalists, at the academic community, at the scientists, at the detractors. Because I provide all the documentation for all of my assertions. And as far as I know, there's nobody else on the entire planet has ever done that or does that besides me with the documentation. And there's only a couple of people. But uh, I'm the most prolific, unfortunately, we have no options. Uh, if I don't do these presentations, nobody is going to have this conversation. And that's not acceptable. We can't have a future in nuclear power at the same time. 
The number of geothermal greenhouses rapidly increasing in Turkey. Geothermal can replace everything. 21 of the 37 specialized organized industrial zones based on agricultural since 2018 will be heated with geothermal energy. And it's quite a lot. Heating in greenhouses are 60% of the total production cost. Uh, there's a spot just open in Canada and Alberta. We'll produce 23,000 pounds of strawberries every day all year long. And up there it gets minus 40. They're doing it through geothermal. Uh, Hormone-free production. Really? You're going to be adding hormones to the food now? Due to the in ideal internal temperatures. An increased yield is achieved by five to six times compared to tomato production in the open. You can grow five or six times more tomatoes in the same land by using geothermal. It prevents diseases. And so 250,000 tons of vegetables, vegetables will be produced each year which is equal to half a billion pounds of vegetables by geothermal. Half a billion pounds. That's not impressive at all, is it? That's amazing. Which means they're going to produce 1.4 million, 1.369, 1.37 million pounds a day. This is the numbers we're talking. 1.3 million pounds a day. And if you... Um, yeah, so let's look at that on the big screen. Let me break it down for you. If you get $3.22, which is the third number up, then that means each day you're making $4.4 million. And if you're getting those numbers each year, you can look at $1.6 billion for a $300 million investment. So you're going to pay for itself in the first year and all the wages and everything else for the, the uh, employees. So that's pretty, pretty impressive, isn't it? Geothermal. UK hospitals install geothermal heating and cooling systems. Well, because you don't need gas, oil, coal, or degenerate nuclear. And they're only going to go uh, 250 meters deep, and they're going to have 64 holes that are about this big each. <coughs> I'm going to terrible flu. I got uh, ew, stuff here to try to calm down my throat. See if we can get through the show. Geothermal experts agree on huge potential for expansion. Uh, currently confined to countries' volcanic activity. But actually, it's under everybody's feet. You just got to dig or drill deep enough. And the technology is the obsolete technology for around 100 years now. And because the industry got all the universities are too busy working on nuclear, they won't put any effort into geothermal. And the only thing holding geothermal, like huge temperatures, 900 degree Fahrenheit temperatures back, is the ability to be able to, to get bits that can handle the deep and depths. And as deeper you go, the harder the rocks because they're, they're heated so much over time, right? But they're unfortunately way behind, but now they're still finally getting there. Uh, just to remind everybody, the truck is back in the garage. I'm sure everybody's thrilled to hear that one. And um, I didn't need a transfer case. So now I have, uh, they're 1500 plus dollars. And, and um, I'm trying to get another diagnosis. <sighs> And there's nothing I can do about it. Only uh, so we're after spending a, an absolute fortune, and it turns out not to be the transfer case. It's 
a disaster. And we, and we got uh, the puffins announced yesterday that puffin colonies are a complete failure across the board here. The survival of the fledglings is almost non-existent. And they didn't lay, they didn't have fledglings until when the fledglings were supposed to be flying away, that's when the fledglings finally showed up. They're blaming it on starvation. And of course, you know how revolting the industry actually is when you tell these stories. And the bike is broke down. I'm gonna drag that down to a guy on Friday, if I can get the truck working. <laughs> Oh, by the way, the boat didn't work on Friday either. Put the boat in the water and the boat, I got a video I just didn't import it, unfortunately, maybe I'll remember tomorrow. And right now I got uh, two chargers on the batteries. I picked up a five gallon jury can of gas to put in a clean tank and see if that's the issue, but I couldn't even get it to touch gas, which it was running fine for the 16 trips we got out doing bird counts, the bird species which is a total failure. The 46 million migratory species didn't show up and everybody's like, eh, who cares? I do. North Korea tells United Nations the world is at the brink of a nuclear war thanks to the American hysteria. Well, it's actually thanks to the United Nations, right? The League of Nations, who changed the name of the United Nations after Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And uh, their first action as the United Nations was to go in, they used more ordnance to bomb North Korea, what they call a police action, than all of World War II munitions combined on this little country. They napalmed and burnt down with the most hideous material known as napalm. Every, every community, every town, every village, every city in the entire country. And got millions. Now, before that, North Korea was occupied by Japan for 50 years. Now it's been sanctioned land, sea, and air embargoes by United Nations for 70 years. So that's 120 years without having any freedom whatsoever. And so they need a boogeyman, see? Right? And Saddam Hussein was one of them. Mubarak was another one of them. Gaddafi was another one of them. Syria. So the, the ISIL, the, you had the Mujahideen, which got destroyed by Russia over 10 years in Afghanistan, allegedly. But there was a couple of hundred survived, and then they created 10,000 Taliban. So for 10,000 Taliban, they flattened Afghanistan and Iraq, and each of these countries got millions dead, millions missing, millions in refugee camps, millions unaccounted for, millions of orphans, and he fired 5.5 million rounds a month for nine years to get 10,000 Taliban. A couple of hundred of them went to India, so he fired 22,000 drone strikes, killing thousands and thousands and thousands of people, mostly wedding parties on top of that, to get the 200 Taliban over there. Another 200 that was remaining from Afghanistan and Iran started up ISIL, he said, so then they had 10,000 ISIL. And so they went over and flattened Libya, then went over and just annihilated right off the map Syria to get those 10,000. They didn't get them, but they got the other 7 million people, the victims, particularly the women and the children in each of these countries. 200 of them went to Africa and got 10,000 barefoot, illiterate soldiers together and became Boko Haram, 10,000 Boko Haram. So they went over to Africa to get them. There's millions dead, millions missing, millions in refugee camps, millions unaccounted for, millions of orphans. And the only people that won these wars was Monsanto because they're not allowed to grow their own genetic food in the countries for 20 years. And so the only people who was growing food was of all people, Monsanto folks. And they used tons and tons and tons of dull ram, depleted uranium, low level radioactive material, which has already gone through a chain reaction and is pyrophoric. And so it leaves a trail of fission and radioactive products across the landscape on the way to the target because it's liquid as it hits it. it disperses widely into the water tables and the farmlands and the communities, the schools, the hospitals and everything else. 
And so South Korea has been a willing genocide machine for United Nations, like 195 countries. But uh, there's nothing united about this organization. They're a corporation, and Eisenhower called it a military-industrial complex. North Korea's state media claimed to tell the 74 fatalities from the Wuhan coronavirus, which is the scamdemic, and you're not allowed to talk about it, or September 11th, on any of the social media platforms. Doesn't matter how much free rights you have in your country, social media decided that you can't talk about those two subjects because they affect the United Nations' future. Yoon administration invested 1.8 billion won in public budget, in public relation, in, in uh, propaganda for Fukushima contaminated water safety. Water safety for three months. Water safety. The irony begins to say those words including a large budget was spent on YouTube video, which meant they can't have me there telling the truth in order for the propaganda to work. And so I can't even stream on YouTube or rumble. Lim Ong Kong criticized the budget aimed at pushing fake news. Yeah, and so what they're doing is South Korea came out on July the 13th with a professor of nuclear and quantum engineering and said that Fukushima's emissions are equal to three spoonfuls of sugar, three cubes of sugar. So then the question is, do you think only three grams of sugar are got into these buildings? These buildings don't make sugar, by the way. And why don't they show you those pictures? when they're trying to make those assertions. And why is the world media pretending they're in a building that don't exist? Because that's what you're looking at there. Western media in 2013, 2014, pretending they're at the fuel pool 100 feet above the stump of reactor four that should have been leveled. It was, it was confirmed that young government, who was a former prosecutor, and had claimed several years back before he was elected as the president, had claimed that Fukushima didn't melt down, that they weren't destroyed, that they didn't collapse, and that there wasn't any emissions. And today we see that common story now being promoted from South Korea. 1.8 billion won over the three months to promote the safety of the contaminated water, to promote the safety the safety. You know how many ALP systems do you have in South Korea? None. And who, who, who's in charge? The Ministry of Culture and Sports and Tourism? Not the nuclear industry, but the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism. And so they paid YouTube a huge amount of money to promote the fake story and they can't have me out there telling you the truth. Which, uh, I should be suing these people for that, right? And because you got nobody else to pick on, it's overload on my shoulders. They had uh, 165,000 copies of the booklet, 10 Ghost Stories of Fukushima Contaminated Water. I haven't seen it or read it, but you can imagine what kind of propaganda that's going to be. Large budget is spent on YouTube video productions. I can assure you I produced more than they did at the same time. I have zero budget. Which is $1.8 million Canadian. From July the 10th, actually July the 13th, to September the 28th, well, in English anyway, the truth about the Fukushima, the truth. Why do you need to tell the truth about Fukushima if you've never done anything wrong? As told by Korean top experts, 
As our marine products safe, one minute we're broadcast through to YouTube advertisement costing one billion fifty million wong or one billion wong. <coughs> got endless money to tell their lies. There's no limit. 74.2 million wong to air promotional videos, propaganda, on the subways and the trains. And they produce card news to promote the safety of the contaminated water from Fukushima. About 100 million wong to distribute the cards, news, 10 ghost stories by Fukushima water, and then threw them away after a few days. 90,000 copy, copies of the booklet, 10 Ghost Stories of Fukushima. The Ministry of Culture, Sports, and Tourism printed it and distributed it. Not nuclear academics, not nuclear scientists, not nuclear universities, which won't hesitate to cut your throat. August 24th, well, like, answer to, like before the discharge, well, does anybody really think that this is after the nuclear meltdown started? Do you really think that nothing got out of the buildings for 12 years? When the buildings should be razed the rest of the way to the ground, there's nothing functional there. By investing the budget in brochures that will be provided for a week and then discharged. And who's to prove they actually printed it, distributed it, and, and didn't stick it in their own pockets? <laughs> they are so Koreans. So you can almost guarantee you that's what they done. They started promoting the safety of the contaminated water from Fukushima, from the nuclear plant, by investing the budget in the brochures that will be provided for one week and then discharged. The majority of the citizens and scientists are concerned about the discharge of the contaminated water, but really, really, but you're not concerned about what's been going on for 12 years. I'm confused. You're concerned about it, but you don't show that picture a single time. And you're not concerned about all the media worldwide, particularly Western media, pretending they're in the fuel pool of a building that don't exist. In this case, reactor four, that's not concerning. The aim is to dispel harmful rumors. The, tr the truth is harmful rumors, that's what they're saying. In fact, Japan Times, I think it was Japan Times, or Japan Today, took down my comments, <coughs> I'll show you coming up, and uh, it was just headlines, some of them from that newspaper itself, <laughs> and called it disinformation. Some of it was their own headlines. Aim is to dispel harmful rumors. Aim is to dispel any descending voices whatsoever. Fukushima food event hits London for the first time. <coughs> Boris Johnson, before he stepped down, uh, two, two and a half years before he, he was forced down, <coughs> and I remember I got the flu, um, there's going to be a bit stuffy. And... Uh, it's not easy to, when your throat is so raw to do these videos and I apologize. But I can't sit in silence. So Boris Johnson, two and a half years before he was removed from office as the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, had removed all restrictions on, on baby food, baby food and cereal, which is what the children are going to eat before they go to school, right? from the Fukushima nuclear meltdown area itself. And two and a half years later, before he was forced out of office, he removed the restrictions for the rest of the population and allowed it to be shipped in the United Kingdom and said he was looking forward to every, every store carrying Fukushima food from the nuclear wasteland. But he picked up 30 million one-ton bags and just 3% of the land. Aim is to dispel harmful rumors and increase the sale of the deadly radioactive food from a nuclear wasteland. 
like uh, it's kind of probably hard if you're not familiar with this video because a lot of times when I'm talking that's who I'm talking to I'm never talking to the people that are following me I'm never talking to the people that support me I don't need to to say anything to them, they're, they've already showed that they're well aware. Geiger counters at 230 counts per minute. They're growing food right alongside of one ton bags of radiation. There's 30 million of these one ton bags and that's 30 million one ton trucks bumper to bumper right wrapped around the planet five times. Now, the food was banned by 55 countries from 14 prefectures, not just Fukushima, for a decade. Not Canada, but actual countries. Canada removed all restrictions after 93 days. And so Japan couldn't ship the food from the nuclear wasteland anywhere only to Canada. And Canada was captured by the nuclear industries in the 40s. Canada really doesn't exist. It's, it's a nuclear something or another, but it ain't Canada. The agricultural bounty of Fukushima Prefecture, and they destroyed everybody's future, including their own. They destroyed everything and everybody's future. Past, present, and future for 80 years. Now it's coming home to roost. The agricultural bounties of Fukushima Prefecture reached the taste buds. Well, you can't taste it or smell it or hear it or feel it or touch it or pick it up or throw rocks at it. But to write something like that is so dishonest, and it shows what kind of character this mass murderer actually has, whoever wrote it. It was similar festive, festive, plan for London and Singapore. They're just literally, the only way to describe these people are they're sadistic monsters. Uh, or mass murderers, more appropriately. Fukushima-grown peaches, grapes, and rice are among the products being offered for tasting and sale at the event. And guess who's holding the event? That's right, no less than Tokyo Electric Power Company, who's not even a decommission authority on top of that. And the reason they left them in charge, so you blame them when the, you find out the ocean died from nuclear instead of the nuclear industry. And the nuclear industry has it coming. And we're going to make sure... The world knows this. Tokyo Electric Power Company is holding a food fair in London and Singapore for food from the nuclear wasteland. Yeah, try, try making that up on your own. And it's also aimed at curbing, curbing harmful rumors about food from the area. Har harmful rumors about food from the nuclear wasteland. It's almost too much to bear when I hear statements like that. When I hear these absurdly dishonest statements like that. It's hard to comprehend that there's people out there doing what they're doing to cover up the enormity, the heartache, and the perpetual misery that this material, you know, they got 105,000 sites like this of one ton bags, and they got the Irigans to claim it's a rumor. Your, your number one enemy of all species is the nuclear industry. And the current generation is the inbreeds of the previous generations. But I can't let stuff like this go unchallenged. So let, let me explain some of this to you. It's not very hard to disprove their narrative. I'll just go through a few headlines from a couple hundred kilometers away. Now, now remember, they're growing food right alongside of one ton bags of radiation. If you think you can trust this industry, 
you're you're in, uh, making a serious mistake. Air samples in Tokyo at 270 times more contaminated with cesium-137 than global weapons followed peak. So in, the, in a, the, the most prolific time for nuclear detonations, followed from J Fukushima nuclear meltdowns in the capital, Tokyo, where there's 36 million people in metropolitan Tokyo, was 270 times more than contaminated with just gamma, cesium in particular, only to acknowledge him because nothing else exists according to the nuclear industry lately. Because where's the betas, where's the alphas, where's the neutrons, where's the x-rays? It's so dishonest just to say something like that. But that means you're supposed to evacuate Tokyo, that kind of number. They also had a huge plume of Krepton-85 over Tokyo from the mix oxide fuel. They acknowledged the 300,000 plus Beckles a square meter near Tokyo before the end of March, and not included iodine-131, which is the cover story for the radioactive fallout, by the way. And it's a nasty isotope, but it's the actual cover story. The biggest byproduct of the radioactive fallout is gonna be curium. That's why they call it a curium core when it melts down. Tokyo, at 29 million beckles a square meter in the soil. You never go back, that's never go back stuff. You never go back, you run away, you leave everything behind, and you think you're lucky stars if you don't get sick and die or get sick and spend the rest of your life liquidating your assets to try to bring some comfort to your loved ones who are, who are also in that environment. If the drinking water is unsafe for infants, it's unsafe for everybody else, and that's what it was in Tokyo. In Tokyo, and the professor's true, 70% of Japan's territory is polluted. Experts worried about catastrophic impacts on the health. Well, no, you can predict it. There's gonna be a massive amount of heart problems, a massive amount of lung problems, a massive amount of respiratory and pituitary and thyroid and adrenaline and debilitating illnesses like Alzheimer's and dementia and autism, and diabetes and Down syndrome. And schizophrenia is gonna be prevalent forever after. To grow food right alongside of one ton bags of radiation. You got any idea how insane that statement actually is? But it gets worse. They're actually cutting our 14 million bags open, two kilometers from the ongoing meltdowns in Okuma. They're dumping that soil out and growing food in it for sale. That's how disconnected they actually are. Governments did not interfere and came to results. 1.5 million becquels a kilogram near a church in Tokyo. Tokyo soil at 919,000 becquels a square meter in another study. So you got all of this documentation quantifying the, it's incontestable, it's unassailable documentation. You got 30 million one ton bags where they're so arrogant they're so evil, they're actually growing food right alongside of and shipping it worldwide. And just Fukushima Prefecture, you're talking about a billion pounds of rice, just Fukushima Prefecture. And there's 13 other prefectures that were banned at similar numbers. And that's being shipped worldwide. Questions will also be answered regarding the safety of the discharge into the ocean of the treated water. You can't treat the water. The ELP system didn't work. De you can't decommission it. It's nuclear meltdowns. The reactors are gone, you, right? You can't decommission something that's long gone. The discharge is into the ocean. Let me touch on that. So they're not gonna report on it no more. The tritium now has gone through the news cycle and now there will never be another discussion. We blew our only opportunity to have a discussion. This planet did, I'm saying. Not us, not the people who support me. We tried our best, right? Let me just explain the actual, what the tanks, the tanks were all built at the same time. Huh. 
my voice might give out here. So let's look at the water filtration. Because that's such an important story, and the majority of people have no idea about this story. Uh, 2014, three years later, the Events Liquid Processing System, which is brand new, does, didn't exist before, has yet to function. And six months later, it came out the Ureva, which is the same as the Alp system. It was the same thing. It was unused and kept out of operations. Because once you turn it on, you can never change the filter. You can never get back in the building. And if you can't change the filter, then it can't work. And the problem with it was, and excuse me, i got to do something silly here. Get my voice goes. Ugh. That's five hits today already. For the last three years, the system was unused and kept out of operation. And you know what it is today? It's unused and kept out of operation. The groundwater bypass operation had no effect. They were going to catch water coming down the mountain, stop it going through the site, and pump it out into the ocean. It had no effect. They were going to build a fence to stop the radiation. Of course, that's probably one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. They said they need a billion dollars to do it. Of course, it's ludicrous to suggest they could, and they didn't. The ice wall is not meeting expectations. Why would you build an ice wall, for goodness sakes? Why wouldn't you build a real wall? And the ice wall is worse because it causes a neutron reflection off the ice itself which can cause a chain reaction and melt down the ice wall. That shouldn't exist. Why would you build an ice wall? The Siri system, which was supposed to filter cesium-137, because that was the cover story, right? And don't worry, though. We got a system. It's called a Siri. And a Siri and a Korean, too, which disappeared from the lexicon. So did the Siri in 2013. The Siri system was supposed to separate cesium-137 atoms, isotopes, from the other atoms in the water. Again, this is the stupidest thing imaginable to suggest you can do it. Because you can put 200 million atoms on the head of a needle, you can't see it. So say 50,000 them with cesium-137. They're all the exact same size. To suggest that you can separate that uh, it should be criminal to even suggest you could do it because you can't. Technical plans to dump stored, water stored. Well, I just showed you the system didn't work in 2014, so it didn't work in 2013. There's already a, released an enormous amount of highly contaminated water directly into the ocean from a plethora of leaks from the reactor buildings. Let's see. That's a really interesting statement because there's no leaks at the reactor buildings. They literally don't exist anymore. After the water passes through the crippled units, crippled, does that look like crippled to anybody? It is processed through the Siri system to remove cesium. You can't remove cesium. You have to remove every isotope at the same time. You can't, they're all the same size. And they're so tiny, you're talking about 200 billion of them on the head of, 200 million of them on the head of a needle, you can't see it. You can't separate those 200 million atoms. Back to this bizarre story. So the Bangkok event f where they're shipping Fukushima food there for testing from a nuclear wasteland, because there's no, no, no country is, is telling the truth. Right? They were trying to create, and it's pretty successful for the most part, protests worldwide of tritium. Right? That story came out on July the 13th. Uh, July the 13th. 
Maybe I should explain that just in case somebody's new here and don't know what the story is and to reinforce it for everybody else. Just gotta make sure I can find my way back. <laughs> I should be right there somewhere. a little bit should be right here somewhere oh, there you go so this is the original story from July the 13th from South Korea professor Young Jong Il who's a professor at the Department of Nuclear and Quantum Engineering Dana you're not a professor of nuclear quantum engineering Dana why should we believe you well, because I'm honest, I'm gonna show you that picture, <laughs> for starters. It gives me more credibility than this creature. So Professor of Nuclear and Quantum Engineering at a major institute university in South Korea says, the radioactive releases from the buildings that don't exist, and look at the media pretending the building exists. These are the biggest medias too, right? Big shot celebrity journalists pretending they're in a building that don't exist. So officially, only three grams got out of that building of sugar. They say there's 2.2 grams, though, of tritium in the 1,000 tanks they have on site, which were all built in 2013 to manipulate you into thinking nothing got out of the buildings. But everything got out of the buildings within the first six days, and which is why I can show you this picture of the big media worldwide pretending they're in a building that don't exist because nothing got out. So that's why they done that, because nothing got out, right? And you got a professor, a professor at the Department of Nuclear and Quantum Engineering telling you it's equal to three ice, uh, sugar cubes getting into the ocean from buildings that don't even exist. And it's equal to splitting that one gram coin 16 ways and taking one of them is that's what's getting out of the 1,000 they're going to dump each year out of 1,000 tanks. That's the official story. You got a hideous bunch of people out there telling you that the picture to your left is the real picture when it's actually the picture to the right. Some customers commented the grapes were large and well-rounded, indicating they're high quality. Some customers. Free tasting are offered every Friday through Sunday. Bring the kids, everybody's entitled to their leukemia shots. Food Japan 2023. In Singapore, a booth will be set up between October the 1st and October the 13th at Food Japan 2023 in Singapore. Food Japan. Packed rice from Fukushima Prefects will be offered in a business meeting space available to help expand distribution sales channel for food grown in a nuclear wasteland right alongside the one-ton bags of radiation. In the center of 14 prefectures that were banned by 55 countries for a decade. These overseas events are operating under the name Haken Fukushima. But Haken mean discover Fukushima. Get sick and die, Fukushima. After the first discharges of water from the Fukushima nuclear power plant, fishermen and influencers of the Yellow Sea, what they call sea influencers, are worried. Well, they're not worried about that. What are they actually worried about, I wonder? So they're saying the first releases, the first release, the first re discharges of water. Did anybody bother? How come nobody shows this picture and says that word? Well, nothing got edited in the last 12 years, thank goodness, Dana. Because that's not going to work, is it? So South Korea, I believe it's or China, China, what they're known as sitting in front of their cell phone cameras, sea influencers as they're called in China, 
broadcast live on the internet and speak to their virtue, virtual customers across the country. And this evening, the young woman places great emphasis on the quality of her products. And they say business has dropped down dramatically. After, since Japan began discharging water from October 24th, like, do you really believe that it's been like this for 14 or 12 years, almost going on 13 years? You really think, right, that nothing got edited here? Of course you don't. Anybody just looking at these pictures, hopefully. And if you do, then leave mommy's computer alone. These fear, they fear contamination of shrimp and other crabs, including those caught in China, and sales have started to decline. So imagine if the truth was to come out that the buildings have been discharging for 12 years straight, uranium, plutonium, americium, neptunium, strontium. Then you can't read the single tritium because it's so weak compared to the other isotopes. Oh, and you say, they start to decline the sails, even though the water is still thousands of kilometers from the Chinese coast. I find that really offensive when I hear stuff like that. Thousands of kilometers from the coastline. Thousands of kilometers from the coastline, is it? This is uh, March the 15th, Reactor 3 blowing up. It covered the entire planet by April the 7th, 2011. And, and so when you see him suggesting this is it's still thousands of kilometers away from the Chinese coast, and there's so much information available to just prove that false assertion, but the media was happy to run out and stab you in the back. Right? The media was tickled pink to come out with that story. Normally everything the world should have brought seafood as gifts and our products should have sold well. People are afraid to eat them. And they, they should be afraid to eat them. And if you're going to be honest and look at the actual documentation, then you should be terrified to eat it. And the reason that they're saying 2.2 grams is all that got out of there, it's because they know they killed the planet, right? And they don't want that to come back in their faces because their family, these are self-centered, see? They're worried that their family is going to find out how evil they actually are. It's absurd. For us, it's like a precipice, the feeling of falling from the sky to the ground before we had three or four hundred orders a day, now we only have a few dozen. A sea influencer. They're just a, f a salesman for the fishing industry. I explained to him that it is still safe and that there is still a little time before the water reaches China, despite the fact that the plume covered the planet by 20 to 30 days after the meltdown started. Everything was contaminated. But the seafood is really bad. I explained to them there is still safe and that there's still a little time before the water reaches China. And so the media is happy to run these types of story. The country has even suspended its import of seafood products from Japan. A particularly alarmist speech taken up by this researcher from the Beijing Normal University. New alarmist speech. Nuclear contaminated water can be transported in a marine ecosystem through the food chain. It can enter the human body after consumption of seafood. No, like they're growing food, billions of pounds in a nuclear wasteland. And it's contaminated with direct fallout. It's the worst case scenario. And so they're trying to, and successfully have forced everybody's attention to seafood and pretend that grown food, where there's 30 million one tons of bags of radiation picked up, is a non-issue. It's so sadistic, it's, 
it's a mind boggling every single day. Based on the results obtained during live or previous inspection, we can predict that the contaminated water just released, just released, has been going on for 12 years, will reach China one and a half to two years at the earliest. And because the question of time is on everybody's mind for the moment, the water discharge for Fukushima is still far from having reached China as part of the Yellow Sea. Well, obviously, that's not true. The whole planet was covered with radioactive fallout right away. Everyone has their own hypothesis. Yeah, but it's not based on the actual inventory. It's not based on the meltdowns, or you would show that. It's not based on the fact they're growing food in a nuclear wasteland right alongside, right alongside a one-ton bags of radiation. It's, it's just, it doesn't even seem that's possible. If contaminated water comes here, where will we fish? I've been fishing for 30 years. I don't fish. I won't have a job when the contaminated water arrives. Contaminated water arrived in China in the first week, and it was massive. Living a fantasy is a guaranteed way to destroy everything. At the moment, the weather is bad, but the trawlers will return to work in a few days. And from now on, they want to work near the Chinese coast to avoid as much as possibly possible approaching the water arriving from Japan. It hasn't stopped for 12 years. It's, so those, all of these stories, because Japan put out a billion dollars for advertise, uh, for media that promote the law. And that's what you were just listening to that time. Environment Ministry, tritium, tritium, tritium remains below detectable limits, tritium. Anybody's worried about tritium when you look at this, these depictions is you're way off. Tritium. Bags are not full of tritium. Incredibly stuffed up, and I apologize to everybody. The plant operator deludes it to reduce the tritium level to one cent of the World Health Organization, which shouldn't even exist. It's the military industrial complex. They don't have any sovereignty over anybody's country. Why are we taking marching orders from known monsters? And look, they run multiple stories on the same subject out there on a great big boat to get their samples and only looking for tritium instead of the full range of fission products that is. Japan to begin releasing the second batch of Fukushima water on October the 5th, this Thursday, which is my birthday. No irony in that one. Tokyo Electric Power Company Holding Incorporation plans to release approximately 7,800 tons of treated rate treated. The same amount to the discharge over the last 17 days. Prepar preparation will begin next Tuesday to check tritium. Release of the first batch of treated water began on August 24th. No, it began in 2011 and never stopped. And so the only way that law can work is if all the universities, all the academics, all the medias, all the governments worldwide work to promote the law. That's the only way the law can work. No abnormal tritium levels detected in the seawater. So this is how the law works. Every media will do this, tritium everywhere. You'll see the word tritium show up everywhere including the comments, for goodness sakes. Right, they'll just push that narrative in every direction. Jeez, all the people worrying about tritium, according to you, a person that after going to the dentist takes an eight-hour flight to a resort, eats a pancake with fruit in it, drinks coconut water after you run on the beach, and by night drinks a couple of spirits, and does that once every couple of years, that person is going to die of radiation poisoning like soon. Eat two bananas and tell me how much you glow. 
Well, can you imagine what kind of scumbag you got to be to put a statement like that uh, in the comments section? Eat two bananas and tell me how much you blow. Japan, I got to admit, Japan had, has some of the most evilest trolls in the comment section I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot. They're running out of space at the site, and they need space before modern decommissioning work. Even if you store the water at another site, it still wouldn't be viable long-term solution to the amount of land needed would continually increase. Because Japan is too tiny. But actually, somebody done the math and said you can actually put 15 million, almost 16 million tanks on the land that's available. But to suggest that Japan is running out of land and overpopulated and can't store it because of that, I think people like that write comments like that should be prosecuted. So I said, well, I'll put in some headlines. So here's a whole bunch of headlines I stuck in and, and it posted, but it had to wait for approval, right? So I put in a whole bunch of more headlines that I cover regularly. And your comment is waiting, moder uh, moderating. So I put in more comments. Hiding these headlines from people is mass murder for the first one. Your comment is awaiting. So, let me see. So then I got an email. Your comment has been removed. Well, it never got there. It was off topic and considered disinformation. And look at it. Look at a. The comment itself, though, these are all headlines of radio. That part is all headlines from North America and South Korea. It's off topic. But some of those headlines are from that same media, the degenerate Japan today. Japan is more support companies affected by Fukushima plant water discharge. Japan to support companies that lost business due to Fukushima. Well, Fu Fukushima hasn't stopped releasing for 12 years, right? So the tanks is a fake story. The whole purpose of the tanks was to manipulate you in the not seeing, understanding that happened. Japan's fishery minister pledged assistance to companies affected by the discharge, the discharge of treated, diluted water. The ultimate insult. Calling that treated, diluted water, 100% uh, should be a crime for them to do something like that and, and even suggest something like that that is treated or diluted. We will conduct swift examinations of marine product, ensure the fishing industry can continue to operate smoothly. On August 24, Tokyo Electric Power Company announced it had begun discharging. Tokyo doesn't own the new the planet and the oceans. Well, why don't you put these pictures of reactor three and four in your story and see how many people are convinced by your story? That it had begun discharging, treated, diluted water for 31 tons of water during a critical the current fiscal year, which equals nearly 30 tanks. Well, that's shipped it's around three, uh, I think it's, I can't remember how much is in the tank off top of my head, so I shouldn't say nothing. 31 tons, so there's 10 tons in a tank. 10,000 liters in a tank. Does anybody actually believe that story? Like, if you put the radiation that we're talking about into the tanks, well, first off, when you put it in the first tank, you can never build another tank on site. Let me see here. 
There we go. I got lots of stuff in this, but it's, this is a quick and dirty headline. This is Japanese media, by the way. Two sieverts an hour of better radiation. What about the gammas, the alphas, the neutrons, the x-rays? So let's say five to ten sieverts per liter, per liter, which is a lethal dose. So if you got a liter of this stuff at the subway station, everybody walks past it for a million years, drops dead that day. So to suggest that you're going to fill up a tank with this stuff, because you didn't have any filtration system. We know that there was no Alps, no Arriva, no Siri, no, no Curry. And I covered that earlier for you. Do you remove my, because I'm off topic. But he, some of them headlines are from that same media. Nuclear power must be, nuclear powers must avoid the nuclear war, is what he's saying. But when you see that, you, you know, when you see someone that looks like that, you know they're a worthless human, right? A military confrontation between nuclear powers must be avoided. That's right, because you can't check, cash your check on Friday ever again. This is probably the most bizarre imaginable. Minister urges the public to eat Five more scallops to offset China banned. Five more scallops. Well, scallops are filter feeders. Right? They, they, they're, they, they're filter feeders. And of all the clams, they're the only ones that has eyes. And they bioaccumulate radiation 125,000 times more than a fish does. So what would you rather eat, fish or scallops? It's like a bowl of cancer. But there's 1,800 diseases. And too bad he doesn't get a couple of fucking thousand of them. What a soulless creature, eh? Excess heat. Lack of fog threatens traditional Kyoto moss gardens. No, it's because Japan is a nuclear wasteland. The reason that the moss is dying is because Japan is a nuclear wasteland. Japan should have picked up 31 trillion one-ton bags of radiation. The entire country, all the topsoil, and all that moss should have been dug up. Because, like, moss doesn't have roots, right? <coughs> Holy shit. My voice is shot. I'll, um, let me play a little video clip. I'll go see if I can clean the pipes here and maybe we can finish the show. Let's play uh, one of my favorite go to videos is how the nuclear industry, the worst of the worst humans imaginable, are on all the boards and they're in charge. And, and they have all demonstrated clearly they hate our guts and the eight million species. And Kathleen Higley is at the podium and she starts bragging about all the different IAEA, United Nations, UNSCLEAR, IRPA, and the other organizations, the radiation protection agencies. And then, now, I've covered every one of those people that are sitting there individually years ago. But just because I got to go uh, clean my sinuses, I'll be back shortly. But this clip is extremely important. It shows you how the industry is hoodwinking the entire planet by using the same degenerate monsters and all the organizations. When I'm when I was trying to pull this talk together, um, not only will I sort of get a little philosophical about the about the impacts and the like and try to put things in context, but I also wanted to talk a little bit about who are these radiation experts that get trotted out 
in events like this or that get to participate in various um, activities and analysis to make pronouncements about is something safe or, or not safe. And if you look, um, you'll see organizations that are often represented, the ICRP, International Commission on Radiological Protection, Protection a premier organization. You'll see um, UNSCEAR and IRPA. So UNSCEAR is the United Nations Scientific Committee on the Effects of Atomic Radiation. IRPA, the International Radiation Protection Association. Uh, the IAEA and some of its folks, the International Atomic Energy Agency. Our own US NCRP. Uh, and then there are a number of other organizations. So there's PAHO, there's the Health Physics Society, there's World Health Organization. All of these will bring in, as necessary, experts to speak to you on issues related to radiation protection, radiation safety, and impacts. But if you, if you go a little deeper and you start looking at these organizations, the ICRP, for example, very well known. It's, it's been operating nearly 100 years, not quite. Main commission, 10 people. It's got five standing committees. So it's 100-ish folks. I lead one of the five committees. If you look at the United Nations Scientific Committee uh, on the Effects of Atomic Radiation that looked at the effects from, from uh, Chernobyl, from Fukushima, uh, from, from other areas, and that has about 30, roughly, countries that are represented in that group. If you start teasing through these pictures, you're going to see the same people on every one of those organizations. So the same people from ICRP, are on UNSCEAR, they're in IRPA. If you look at the NCRP, again, the US organization that advises the country on radiation protection issues, it's 100 people, a lot of gray-haired 100 people. And most of them are part of UNSCEAR, are part of IRPA, are part of ICRP, participate in IAEA. So the result, or the, the real world, is that there's not that many folks that really do radiation, radiation safety, radionuclide transport, dose calculations, all of this in the world. It's a pretty small club, and we wear 20 hats. Today, I put on three pens, and I could put on a whole bunch more, but Health Physics Society, ICRP, Certified Health Physicist, I've got NCRP on there, I've done IAEA, and so the point is, we're a small group, you should cherish us. <laughs> so, think about how disconnected you got to be to be that person. Or just think about how evil the industry is that attracts people like that. So, as we'll see. Historic uh, day as the government gives Hinkley Point C a go ahead. A go ahead. And Hinkley Point was supposed to cost 18 billion uh, sterling pounds, is it, I guess. And in 2023, France, because Britain can't build their own nuclear plants, in 2023, France. Revealed it was going to cost 32.7 billion, which is 39 billion US. More than double the prices. And we know throughout history that once they start building it, you can basically almost double, if not triple, the price again. Does anybody really think it's 54 billion Canadian for stupid disease factories that are surrounded by farms? Now due to start generating power in June 2027. <coughs> Should have even got size well done yet. It's a way behind schedule. France's reactor in Finland is 14 years behind schedule. The one in China is a total disaster, way behind schedule. Announcing the project approval in September 2016. We've always been clear that nuclear is an important part of ensuring our future low carbon energy source. <coughs> it's the most carbon intensive thing on the planet. These two dedicated oil, gas, and coal plants. It's the very farthest thing from low resources, rather. Right? 
It's the most intensive resource industry in the entire planet, period. And that is surrounded by farms. So when they start filling up the fuel pools, there's no containment. And then that's going to destroy the food chain over there. There's 360,000 people reacted quickly and a petition signed just hours after the scheme was rubber stamped. The scheme, the scam was rubber stamped. The contract signing is the point of no return, said the monsters. It's a once in a life opportunity for our businesses and young people. And sure enough, here was another story uh, on the young population. Hinkley Point C increases local young population in Somerset. I almost never read the story because I hate, I hate what they do. And so this is a principal of schools in Sledgemore and Bridgewater are preparing students for work at the disease factory known as Hinkley Point C. They're all besides themselves. Yeah, well, we don't, we don't need, we don't need uh, to waste any time. Let's, let's brainwash the kids and your future is going to be creating these disease factories which ultimately, ultimately destroys your country. The study shows that the 25 to 39 population has increased by 50% in Sedgemore, Sedgemore, with young people opting to stay and work in West Somerset instead of moving to the bigger cities. There's not very many people there anyway. Uh, Principal of Bridgewater and Taunton College has years of experience working for Hinkley Point C to ensure his students are trained in the skills needed for the nuclear genocide industry. School, truly school is the mass destruction, what you're seeing. They're very proud of themselves. What is Japan's Fukushima nuclear wastewater controversies? Despite the International Atomic Energy Agency's support, support, because they're saying that uh, only 2.2 grams of tritium is all that got out of the buildings that were full of decades of reactor cores of uranium plutonium that has, there could be six to 10 reactor cores in each of the fuel pools at the top of each building. There was two fuel pools. Each one was stuffed to over capacity because you don't have a repository in Japan, let alone anywhere else. And we've had actual headlines of that. And obviously it's gone. Japan began releasing it on August 24th. No, it started, it was almost all gone by day five in 2011. There's four reactors, I'm showing you two. There's actually four of these things that are gone and eight fuel pools. Each fuel pool had decades of reactor cores. They're gone also. And they're just as volatile as a reactor core. A meltdown is the same in both of them. Accused Japan, China accused Japan of using the ocean as a private sewer. And international atomic energy of being one-sided. Oh yeah, one-sided is not the word. International atomic agency is saying that never happened. So they're, they're not an agency, they're a misery machine. But most of the chemicals, this is really interesting how they've done this. Most of the chemicals have been removed, chemicals. Uh, radiation is two billion times more toxic than industrial chemicals. Two billion times more toxic. So to call these chemicals is completely dishonest. And when they talk about the tritium, they call it radioactive element, known as tritium, radioactive element. But they call it uranium, plutonium, americium, neptunium, strontium, and a thousand other fission products that you're supposed to be worried about, chemicals. And it's not an accident. And look at this piece of shit, this sack of fucking shit, disgusting parasite. International Atomic Energy Agency samples second batch of ELPS. Second batch. Well, International Atomic Energy Agency was only there five times in 12 years, all of them this year to promote the release 
of the water and the dumping of the 30 million one ton bags of soil in the farmland to be used to grow food into. It's so, it's so evil, I can't come up with a proper name. Machiavellian still doesn't do it justice. International Atomic Energy Agency, independent samplings analysts, and they're right on the boat, look at them, and they're checking for tritium, checking for tritium. They're checking from tritium instead of the actual releases. They got a great big boat. My boat's broken down. Again, my boat's been to Alaska six times, for goodness sakes. I shouldn't even be using it on the ocean anymore. It's so dangerous. No, no, they're, 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 they're in multi-million dollar boat, all the get-ups and, and hard hats and all kinds of suits, flotation suits and life jackets on top of that. Get any idea how much damage I can do to this industry if people, if there was a foundation or, or somebody was able to fund this operation? Does anybody really think that's, that I'm not gonna beat the shit of the nuclear industry if I ever get an opportunity? Anybody think that I'm not gonna win? Because you know I'm gonna win. I'm more than ready to go. Hong, a former journalist, Hong Kong. Hong Kong, and I don't seem to have the headline there. I apologize. Hong, or I'm sorry, Vietnam has imprisoned a lot of, of so-called climate activists. A former journalist, you know my, my, you know what I think of journalists, I hope. And I, I really don't like 350.org, I, I really despise them. And now, allegedly now they're not pro-nuclear is what they're claiming lately. But we, we've called them out many, many times over the years for being pro-nuclear. And she didn't pay taxes from the money they raised And look all the ways, when I, was here, when I went to 350.org, join our action, how to get started in, in their actions. There was the donate buttons, how to get started at the bottom of the page too. Um, more donate buttons to take down the fossil fuel industry. Donate by check, update your monthly gift. Donate by stocks. Donate by retirement funds. Take your retirement funds to donate to them. Wills and trust. Donate your house and, and your and your savings to them if you're dying. Corporate and employment employee giving. Fundraising 350. Donate with shopping online and then chip in right now. Wills and trust. These are not even but greedy people. This is some, how can I donate in honor or memory of somebody? My God. My goodness. Anyway, I found her financial statements from 2022-2021. Last year, they raised $21 million. <laughs> They're totally about the clients. <coughs> Imagine what I can do with $21 million. Bye-bye <laughs> nuclear. I'll kill nuclear in 12 months. The Vietnamese government, who Vietnam was poisoned by Agent Orange. He flew over the country for nine years spraying the chemical Agent Orange, which is banned worldwide. They killed uh, literally the whole coastline because everything eventually washed down the coastline. But there's currently three million children in Vietnam with uh, debilitating uh, malformations and diseases from Agent Orange from Vietnam War. It wasn't a war. Right? The Gulf of Tonkin didn't even happen. The catalyst that the Americans stood, it was all 100% faked, right? They said they, and, and the captain of the ship that was in 
um, the Gulf of Tonkin at the time was allegedly attacked, said they weren't attacked. But that was a catalyst used to justify destroying the future of uh, tens of millions of people and destroying the ecosystem with Agent Orange. Ural Federal University. I can't even remember. Oh yeah, Ural scientists proposed innovative solution for purifying water from Fukushima. Uh, I think, did we touch on this story? I can't remember. It would be possible to purify water from radio radionuclides using a sorbent that has been developed in the Urals, which is like Moyak area. And so they haven't tested that Moyak. Why would you want to use it anywhere else if you can't if you can't solve Moyak, you can't solve anything else. And it said they can remove tritium. Look at them. There's another fake company looking to cash in on the lie. It's extremely expensive to clean and store water. You can't clean it, for goodness sakes. And the Japanese decided to solve the problem this way. They process some of the water, they pass it through a special insulation filters. Concentrated waste will not be drained, it will be buried. It's not, it's not happening at all. They're, they're not filtering it, they're not capturing any waste or anything like that. It's a complete lie. And the reason is, that the, the water per liter is so it's lethal doses. And so you can't step over the hoses or the pipes going to the filtration without getting a lethal dose. You can't walk down the road 30 feet away from these pipes and hoses without getting a lethal dose. Because you're talking about water, you pour it over the melted fuel, so it's fuel particulates. The filter is so radioactive after 20 minutes, you can never get near it again. If you ran the filter for a couple of hours, turned off the so-called water coming in, put fresh water in, the water coming out the other end is going to be lethal doses by the liter, because that's how radiation actually works. Accumulation of radionuclides in the body can lead to rearrangements of molecules, suppression of the immune system, because your body is attacking everything else will white blood cells and your immune system is compromised and is more susceptible to pathogens and viruses. Increasing the likelihood of tumors, well there's 1800 diseases, literally the medical textbook you gotta worry about. The fact is that standards allowed by the International Atomic Energy of 60,000 becquerels per liter of water are not terrible. So they're promoting the tritium line and and they're by proxy then, they're completely dishonest. TEPCO begins taking Fukushima discharge complaints. It's from just a few hours ago. TEPCO begins taking Fukushima discharge complaints. So if you're losing money, you think because of Fukushima, TEPCO wants to reimburse you. They want to win you over so you don't come out and complain. According to Japan's public broadcaster, which is the farthest thing from a broadcaster, they're a propaganda machine. TEPCO began receiving cases by phone and through an office. Uh, one of them is in Miyagi Prefecture, which is a notorious nuclear wasteland. The office is also offering separate counseling those struggling to sell their goods due to the water discharge counseling. The plant operator plans to compensate for declines in sales, prices, uh, and agricultural products, and agricultural products in the nuclear wasteland itself. They're, they're, they're insane. The, the nuclear industry is insane. It's insane. They told so many lies in the last 12 years and we've, we've challenged just tens of thousands of stories of propaganda. Every media on the planet has, has chipped in to tell the lies. China's enforcing all their ban on seafood since August the 24th. Really, so why would you do it over tritium? 
Why would you ban food over tritium when you didn't ban food over these creatures, which is just two of the four reactors that melted down. Elon Musk accuses Justin Trudeau of crushing free speech in Canada. Crushing it. Canadian government armed with one of the world's most repressive online censorship schemes announced that all online streaming service, I'm banned from streaming, not because the streaming services banned me apparently, but because um, I've been attacked by hackers and can't stream. <laughs> An offer podcast must formally register with the government to permit regulatory controls. So if you're going to podcast from Canada, they need to know what you're talking about and they need to be able to control is what they're saying. Look at that. And remember last year, Trudeau invoked uh, martial law here in Canada because of protesters in Ottawa. So they didn't, they didn't promote or invoke martial law in Ottawa, just they invoked it right across the entire country. And he seized people's bank accounts for protesting, threatened to take their children away for protesting, <laughs> threatened to des destroy their livelihoods for simply doing what your Bill of Rights here in Canada demands that you do is hold the government accountable. You're obligated, it's your obligation, you're obligated to be the checks and balances because you can't put the monster in charge of itself. And so what they're saying, any dissenting voices have to be stomped out, eradicated. The United Kingdom now just announced they're going to arrest anybody that has been fact-checked. So if a major media fact checks you in the United Kingdom, the police are going to show up and charge you with spreading disinformation. But it's, it's okay to say that didn't happen. All the media can do that, that's not a crime. It's a crime to come out and say that that's what it looks like. That's the crime. And they're making it laws. And who gave the order for all of this? United Nations. Which is the first thing from the word United as you can possibly get. 80 years of that, that's not a crime? For you to come out and counter it, that's the crime. For you to say, wait a second, you know, there's all kinds of international models showing a radioactive fallout covering the entire planet in about 20 days. That's a crime. Say, hey, wait a second, you know, the building doesn't exist, the fuel pools are gone. That's a crime. And so this is not acceptable. We're not, I can't sit in silence And so I'm going to do the best I can to make the world a bit better. You know, 30 million one-ton bags. So there's roughly around 105,000 sites in 2019 like this. But nothing got out, only 2.2 grams. All that got out was equal to 122. If you divide that little bit of salt flakes by 22 times, one of them is what they say got out of the buildings that don't exist. Despite the fact they picked up 30 million one-ton bags, nothing got out of these buildings. Despite the fact the buildings blew up, nothing got out of the buildings. If that's not insane, what actually is? And if you took two of these buildings, which should be stripped right to the ground, right? There's nothing left. The building's actually detonated, for goodness sakes. These were 190-foot buildings. If you took two of these buildings and stack them on top of each other, they're not going to be as tall as the top piece of that. And the top piece of that is the bottom piece you're looking at right there. This piece here of 190, this is the one in the reactor one, it's identical twin to reactor three and four, is 190 feet tall. So think about how much, how big, see that guy right there? They give you context of how wide the building is. Now look up, right? So it's a big building, isn't it? Well, there's nothing left. So if you stack them on top of each other, that part up there, which is the bottom part here, is taller. That part is taller than two of these on top of each other. The fuel pools are at the very top of the building. Each of them, they're gone. Right? But, you know, the plume covered the whole planet. 
after about 20 days, the whole planet. But the Fisher story is only one sixteenth of this one gram coin and only twi tw twidium, tritium, twi I like that twidium. <laughs> only 2.2 grams got out of the building, but don't worry because it's in a thousand tanks. If you look at the legacy of the nuclear industry, look at this one here, radium hand cleaner. Cleans everything but the skin. Takes everything but the skin off your hands. No, no, it takes the skin off your hands. They had radium suppositories, for goodness sakes. They had uh, radium makeup for children, radio radioactive lipstick for children, and all of these children got sick and died from using it. It's like radium toothpaste, radium soap. The very last thing you would want on your property, let alone as a commodity, as a consumable. They have, right from the very inception, nuclear has done everything it can to kill everything it comes in contact with. And now it's finally coming around two face to the humanity. You know, all the nuclear weapons testing was a nuclear war. You covered the whole planet in radioactive fallout. That model doesn't even do it justice. Each of those lines are actually two nuclear detonations where the wind blew in the same direction. Anyway, I'm uh, stuffed up pretty bad. I forgot to mention last night, uh, James Lucid donated. Uh, 200 Canadian the weekend. Stephen Young donated 50. Thank you, James. Thank you, Stephen. Hope you're feeling a bit better, Stephen. I know you're probably not. And the truck is broke down. The boat is broke down. The bike is broke down. The truck is in the shop. The bike was in the shop on Saturday. And the motor, the batteries on the boat are charging up. I got clean gas, I'll stick it in another tank and see if I can get it to run. I'm pretty sure it's just a gas issue. There's still a lot of work, there's still a ton of effort. We got a die-off, mass die-off currently going on here of the puffins. The canary and the world's biggest coal mine. We'll see everybody tomorrow night. This big shit fest known as nuclear. Everybody. Links are in the bottom of the description. You want to contribute and try to make this a bit easier to be done. But I am going to war every day regardless. And you should too. You have a great day, everyone. <laughs>